Welcome to the Public Health Cafe and presenting health data. As a public health professional, you'll agree that making scientific data clear is essential to accurate understanding. Epidemiologist Dr. Michael Samuel demonstrates effective ways to present health data in this interesting two-part presentation. Part one, general concepts. Part two, nuts and bolts. Dr. Samuel is chief of the epidemiology and surveillance section of the California Department of Health Services Sexually Transmitted Disease Control Branch. He oversees collection systems analysis and dissemination of data. Dr. Samuel lectures at the Berkeley School of Public Health on the visual display of data and computer methods in outbreak investigation. He holds a Doctor of Public Health and Masters of Public Health degrees from the School of Public Health in Berkeley. He has also published extensively in professional literature. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and enjoy Presenting Health Data by Dr. Michael Samuel. I'm Michael Samuel with the California STD Control Branch of the California Department of Health Services. And I'm here to talk about the visual display of public health data. I'm going to be presenting this in two parts. And the first part is a general overview where I hope to convince you that a picture is worth a thousand words, as the saying goes. I'm going to present some general principles of visual display, talk about some of the most important chart types, talk about the importance of data integrity, and the importance of knowing your audience. In the second part, I'm going to talk about what I refer to as the nuts and bolts of visual display. Things like scale and proportion, color, fonts, etc. I want to mention that I often present this material in a whole semester course at the University of California in Berkeley. So in what I'm going to do in these two relatively short sessions is necessarily a broad overview of this topic, but I hope it gives you some tools that are actually useful and inspires you to think more about the importance of presenting visual uh, data well. And I'll wrap up perhaps convincing you that it's more than a thousand words per picture, maybe more like a hundred million words per picture. This graph is a one just to show you the importance of visual display. This is the so-called epidemic curve of the SARS outbreak in the United States as it's currently going on. And almost everybody has heard of SARS, a, an emerging epidemic that we could have shown this data in a tabular format, and tables are certainly important for prevent presenting public health data, but this graphical display really makes it clear that this thing is shot up importance and appears to be uh, uh, dwindling some in the United States right now. Some of the key points for effective visual displays, in my opinion, and I'll note that it is my opinion because this is a somewhat subjective topic. Some of the things are really quite I'm quite certain about or quite clear. Others are a matter of opinion, and I'll try and highlight that as I go through. But firstly, it's certainly important to present important information, that the graph should not be about something trivial or why display it at all. Complexity in visual displays is important and, and, and is good. Graphs should be rich, should be complex, and should encourage people to ask important questions. Often when you hear people talk about visual display, the first thing they'll say is keep it simple. And there is merit to that in some situations. A lot of audiences, particularly when you're giving an oral presentation, can't absorb a lot of information. But it's better to have one complex chart on the screen that you spend some time with, if it's an important topic, rather than have a few very simple ones that don't tell as rich a story. So in that sense, it's extremely important to know your audience and to consider whether it is an oral presentation versus written material where the audience would have much more time to really spend with it. Um, data integrity is of course critical and important that you're honest about what the data say. You need clear labels and annotations. You need to use the appropriate type of chart, which we'll talk about a bit. Um, uh, you need to use appropriate scales. Pay careful attention to detail and avoid extraneous chart junk or extra bits and pieces that are not useful for communicating the information that you're presenting. 
The one known figure in the field of visual display is Edward Tufte from Yale University. And he's such a prominent person in this field that I want to mention a couple things related to his works. Firstly, look at his books. He has three fantastic books on the topic of visual display. They're lovely to look at, they're amazingly well produced, and they teach you very, very important lessons about visual display. He also teaches seminars around the country, which I'm sure are also a good way to understand some of his key principles. Some of his principles relate to the notion of graphical excellence, which really re is related to what I showed you on the previous slide of, of making the information tell an important story and showing it in a way that inspires the audience to action, that you actually produce it well technically. He emphasizes the notion of data density, that the uh, graph should be rich, that the space should be used well, and it should be packed with important information. He talks about uh, a notion called the lie factor, where a lot of times things can be used to distort information. I'll give you one good example of that later on. But clearly, the data needs to be truthful and honest, and uh, intentional distortions are, of course, unacceptable, and in, in unintentional distortions should be avoided, uh, of course, also. He has an interesting no point of less is more, where oftentimes if you remove something or remove things extraneous, you actually build a clearer visual display and sometimes leave room for additional information. So by taking something out or less, you can actually add more in a clear fashion. And his concept of small multiples and parallelism are really fascinating points of, of leading to very rich, intricate graphs where comparisons are made on various levels of a visual display. This figure here is from the SDD Control Branch's website. And for anybody interested, we had the same type of figure in a data table for every single uh, health jurisdiction in California. But we're using the concepts of small multiples and parallelism to show the differences in the three main reportable STDs in California. Chlamydia, which is going across the top here. And for chlamydia, we have age group, race and ethnicity, and a time trend. Then going down here, we have the different diseases, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. So we have comparisons, say, by age group across the diseases or for different factors of the disease going across this way. So we believe it's a very dense, rich presentation of a lot of important information for our partners in the uh, uh, local health jurisdictions. In terms of the display types, there's line charts, bar charts, pie charts, maps, and quite a few others that I can't get into detail now. And there's charts that are hybrids that combine, say, line charts and bar charts. And then there's also tables, which are, as I mentioned, an important part of visual display, but I'm not going to talk about practically at all in these presentations. Line graphs are a common type of visual display. And one of the key features of line graphs is that the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, is usually uh, continuous or quite close to continuous, something like time or age if it's in very small units. Line graphs can be just a simple line or can be complex with multiple lines on the graph or even uh, two different y-axes representing different quantities that you're hoping to explain. This is an example of a simple line graph. And I want to emphasize down here is what I'm going to be constantly referring to as the x-axis. And this on the vertical is the y-axis. On this particular graph, the y-axis is the number of syphilis cases reported each year in California. And you can see that in the last handful of years, there's been an increase in cases of syphilis in California. This next chart is a very similar chart, but much richer and tells a much more interesting story. We still see in the top line in red that the number of male cases of syphilis is increasing, but we see in the bottom blue line that the number of female cases is decreasing, and we see in the dashed red line that almost all of the increase in male cases is among MSM, or men who have sex with men, gay and other men who have sex with men cases are increasing in California, 
And they're really what's responsible for this epidemic and syphilis that we're seeing right now. So the first one was a simple chart. I'm going to go backwards, a simple story. It tells it clearly, and that may be important. But this is a much richer graph that really more accurately describes what's going on with this epidemic.